Jackson Board of Selectmen meeting here. It's Friday the 11th at 4 o'clock. Thursday the 11th. We're, we're glad you're here. And uh, we'll start right off with our agenda. Our um, chairperson's running a little late and has asked us to go ahead and start. We've got a number of different issues we intend to tackle tonight. So we'll, we'll dive right in and uh, start with the uh, first agenda item which is for us to amend and approve uh, minutes. And we'll start with the regular selectmen's meeting, January 28th. Um, is there a motion to approve the selectmen's uh, minutes from January 28th? So moved. Great, and I'll go ahead and second that. Uh, Bill, did you have any uh, edits or suggestions? Did not. did not. Okay, great, neither did I. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. All right. Very good. Thank you. And uh, we also have uh, two non-public uh, meeting minutes that we need to sign they've been sealed so go ahead and do that this first one is uh, on January 14th uh, RSA 91A3 2C and that is the same RSA that's cited for the second set of non-public meeting minutes <coughs> Next on the agenda is our uh, list of action items. We ended up with no action items for any of the selectmen or the uh, town office but from our last meeting. Uh, we do have uh, a list of future meetings on here to remind you that our regularly scheduled selectmen meetings uh, now start at 4 p.m. Our next meeting is Thursday, February 25th, and that's right here in this office at 4 p.m. Uh, town meeting, Thursday, March 10th, 7 p.m. And then our first meeting after that will be Thursday, March 24th at 4 p.m. right I here. I that that's at the Whitney Center. The oh, yeah, the uh, town meeting, by the way, yeah, it's not here. It's at the uh, Whitney Center. Thank you. Uh, very good. Moving right along to agenda item number three, which is the police report. Martha's glasses. No, I won't. Okay. <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty quiet couple of weeks um, in terms of traffic flow and activity in town, catching up on some training, and we will be attending some training next week to update our uh, first aid, AED, and CPR certifications for the department. And that is going to be held at the Glen Fire Station because that's where the instructor is able to get to. I had opportunity to talk with uh, the principal at the school. Uh, once again, reminding her, uh, looking for further information on the Cop Sync program. And she indicated to me that they had a meeting uh, at the beginning of the week with the superintendent, Kevin Richards, and all the other people who were involved. And <coughs> Kevin is in the process of contacting Mike Salicki, who is the uh, coordinator for the Copson program, and it looks like the schools going to go forward with it. So we'll be on board with that. Uh, if, if that holds true, we'll be on board and should be looking at installation in the middle of summer and the summer, something like that. Is he involved because it's an SAU-wide uh, initiative? Yes. Okay. He's involved because... Uh, 
although each school has their principals, they can't make that financial decision without him. So the last meeting that we had involved all of the SA U9 schools to, to bring it all as one community. So yeah, it's been really good. Um, other than that, that's that's what we have. That's what I've got to report for the day. Firearms training went well? Firearms training has continues to go well. Continues to go well. Uh, are you talking about the class? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had the uh, firearms safety class and introduction, basic introduction to shooting. Uh, we had 13 or 15 people attend, ranging in age from 14 to 75. Uh, it was a great interactive class. It was two hours. People got familiar, got their questions answered, and it was well attended. We do plan on having another class uh, scheduled for the end of March. And at this point, it's just the classroom portion, uh, which involves the concealed carry process, constitutionality of carrying one, and you know just basic safety considerations to make when you're when you're choosing a firearm or have one or somebody gives you one. So yeah, one great. Excellent. Thank you. <coughs> Wonderful. Uh, building inspectors report. Public comment. Oh I'm sorry. Ah, I got ahead of myself. Public comments. B. You read the conservation minutes needed, uh, minutes of February 1st? Pardon me? Have you read the Conservation Commission meeting minutes of February 1st? Um, I have, but at any rate, uh, we'll be happy to um, put that on the next agenda item if you want. I would hope the public, the citizens of the town, have can weigh in on this stuff. Okay. I think it's a necessity. Thank you. Any other public comments? Uh, for the record, um, in uh, October, <coughs> we had um, Bill Lockett in a comment relating to lawsuits that were in effect against the town at the time reacting to a question, said that the older case um, has been, the older case has been settled. No, no, the older case wasn't settled yet. The newer case had been. He was requesting $50,000 uh, towards the settlement of the case that had not been settled. I came in and asked about it in November uh, and got no real response. In, in January, I came in regarding RSA 91A-4, Section 6, regarding the rights of the townspeople to be able to view the results of the settlements that are supposed to be retained on file in the tax collector's office for 10 years for review by the town people. If one of the cases has been settled months and months, I don't know when that was, and one has been sort of settled, I guess, recently, why on, why isn't that information on file in the office for public perusal? And the question I would have for Bill, because I think he went to face on this stuff, will you at least have that in place so people, taxpayers can review that by the time of the election process and town meeting? Um, I can say this, that the, as far as I know, the one of them is not, there's no completion. It's not so. To answer your question, as soon as we get the final completion, it will be available to you. You haven't got the first one yet back either? I didn't know that it had to go to the tax collector. I have it, so I'll give it to the tax collector. Oh, okay, very good. And that will be soon? Tomorrow. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one, as far as I know, is we don't have it. It's not what you call formally settled. And when it is, it will be available just as this one would. Fine, I appreciate that. Thank okay. you. Any other comments? 
Excellent. Now we'll move on to building inspector report. deck up at Dana Place, and <clears throat> I just want to make a comment on this, um, up at Dana Place, those condos up there, there's, I think there's eight condos in a row, two of them have decks, and the rest don't on the second floor, and there's no means of egress, second means of egress on uh, any of those six units, um, because they have sliders in the back, and they're all bolted shut. Well, there's no way to step out of it. Right. Well, that's a good thing, not to step out. Right. It's a bad thing that there's no second means of egress. Right. Second means of egress is out the front door. So that's a requirement in the fire and safety code and the building code. So um, that's one reason why I granted this deck. Um, okay. And out back of the, of the condo, too, there's, there was a stream. It's really probably 30 feet. Uh, but it's not Delta River. It's just a, it's a year kind of But the, the life and safety overrides any other concerns. Okay. It'd be nice that the rest of these places had decks on them too. <laughs> they were designed to have them, but they just never put them on. So, okay. That's a good thing. Um, and then we have a uh, um, number two stem turn over the renovating, I think, the whole entire house. Um, and let's see, uh, near Lake, oh, they did some structural work. They had to change some windows, they put some headers in, change some. Uh, Something to do with the roof too. They put some more headers in for these little cabinets that they put in there. So pretty straightforward. Any questions? No, I have none. Did you get over take a look at the old library? I did. That was it. I think it's just a lot of cosmetic stuff. Okay. Good paint job and fix you a couple shingles in there. Structural issues. No. Okay. No. Great. It's just a little good building. Great. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Kevin. Thanks. Okay, uh, under new business, we've got the Wentworth Extended uh, Liquor License, and this is, uh, it's been signed, so that's all set. It's just an FYI. Yeah, okay. And this is to allow the uh, Wentworth to serve alcohol outside of the uh, uh, hotel for the ice bar event they're going to have between February 18th and March 20th. And that's all we I added two new things the in there. One is the creating bill contract. Agenda here, we've got, uh, that's not on the agenda, so we'll make it a 6B, the contract for uh, Crane and Bell, our, uh, our public accountant here. And uh, any- <coughs> any motion to sign it? Yeah, any, any differences on this contract between uh, the one we saw last year yes. signed? Okay, so um, I make a motion we go ahead and sign the contract for the county. All right, and I'll go ahead and second that then. Um, anything to say on it, Bill? No, I don't. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. All right, very good. And just one, just room here for uh, one signature. Okay, you get it. Do you want a motion on the uh, liquor, sell the liquor outside? Yep. It was just an FYI. I mean, we, yeah, okay. that was presented and we, uh, we actually signed off. Okay. Uh, all right. And, and the other two signatures are PERA forms. One is talking about the waiver request and the other one is saying that we are doing the waiver. Okay. Stating that we're going to do the waiver and then have it. <clears throat> okay, so the uh, waiver request, audit waiver request, which is kind of standard, I think we do one every year, don't we? Pretty much? Mm -hmm. yeah. this, this is the second year we've done the waiver. Okay, great. So um, go ahead and entertain a motion to. Uh, so, ah, very good. You're just in time to uh, weigh in on the uh, motion on the floor to. Um, approve the audit waiver request for the uh, Department of Revenue Administration. 
I made a motion. You I will second it. Yes. Uh, we've got two things here. We've got the uh, uh, waiver request, and then after that, connected to it, we've actually got the uh, the waiver itself that we want to sign. So, uh, anything you want to add to that while you catch your breath? Really <laughs> good. All those in favor of uh, of, grant, of signing aye. the waiver request, say aye. Aye. Very good. Uh, Put me on there too. And there's just one spot on the uh, second one for a signature. So I'll have you sign that since you're the chair. Okay. 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 Steve as well during the election about the uh, parking. I guess we had one complaint, Chief, this winter so far? Uh, it was more of a concern. Concern? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, and uh, otherwise, I guess it's been all right. So we haven't really had too many things. I'm just going to have to get a hold of those guys from Forest Service to see where they are on that, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and I just wanted to acknowledge that they've released their, their report, which kind of shows their plan. We got a, a, one of those on file, a copy here on file, if anybody wants to take a look at it. Okay, great. Thanks. Um, moving on to item eight, public comments. Uh, I'm gonna start with a public comment. I wish to uh, thank everybody who sent their condolences. My sister passed away this week, um, so I, Needless to say, I've been kind of hectic in my world, but uh, hopefully she's in a better place. But thank you all for uh, commenting and giving condolences and stuff. I appreciate it. Any uh, other? Stan? Uh, I guess it's out of order, but this is a really a question on new business. Sure. Um, do, we, do we have any idea how late the site's part is going to be open, what the hours are, where it's open. I'm sorry, what can you open? He was in you weren't here, the rent was uh, requested. I believe the dates off, that I read right. off were February 18th to March 20th. Right, uh, yes. to March 2nd, I think. But March 2nd, okay. Uh, but, I mean, do you have any idea how late every night that's going to be open? Or do they have any limitations on it? Yeah, February 18th. I'm not the vicar wise, but as far as the town is concerned, do we care what, can they be open all night? I mean, you know. Well, they have to follow the Liquor Commission's law, which they have to stop serving at 12.30, I guess. That's what, you know, I want to No, that's unfold. usually inside. I mean, does the town care that they could be outside till 12.30? There could be 25 people at this bar outside, uh, you know, drinking? <laughs> Potentially, I suppose, yeah. I mean, does anybody care? I, again, I'm just looking at this for the first time, Stan. No, I'm just saying, that's <laughs> all not. No. Uh, they put some restriction on the weddings. We can so find out. I mean, we can certainly give them a good Well, uh, I mean, does, does the board care? Or does it I mean, if they're following the liquor license laws, I, you know, I don't personally have an objection to it. Do you guys? I don't know that we have the, any authority to over that. Like that. I mean, if we so have... So that they could go on, you know, they could... If the liquor laws don't say what time you have to close if you're doing an ice bar, then the town doesn't care. I'm not surprised. Well, if they're but selling they alcohol, they have to close at, at the, yeah, the bar at the same time the bars do, if they're same selling time. alcohol, which I assume, assume I'm sure they're doing. They <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so they, they would have to follow the liquor laws of any other bar or uh, uh, establishment that's serving. All the other bars are inside, right? True. And this is outside mm -hmm. with people living in the area. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the town is, is necessarily required to allow them, but I, I, I'm just wondering whether anybody thought that. Uh, I had not, but again, I've just seen this for the first time, so I haven't put any thought into it. You can ask and see what their hours are going to be. That helps you out. We got obviously a lot, of, well, you know, two weeks before they actually open. But. B. Is Cody uh, still working for the town? He is still on the roll, but we want to use him as an as-needed basis, on call, if something comes up. Right now, I don't think we've had any hours for Goody, have we? Have we had it? Yeah, he's, no, he's still... Still working with Jay to get, get up to speed there. So he's it will be tapering as we go, B. That's the old, that was the process that we would be... Well, that's what I thought you told us when we get to Jay that we wouldn't... Right, but it's not going to be... You know, this day he's going to be gone. It's it's going to be a learning curve for Jay as well. And, and the budget for him was cut in half. It was cut in half. Yeah. yeah so that was our, our line on the budget. We cut it in half this year, and probably it'll be eliminated next year. I would imagine, with the exceptions of having them, you know, something major project came up that we would need them. That's correct. That's we could hire. You know, it could be somebody from the state that we might have to hire to do it if Jay wasn't capable. I mean, somewhere somewhere along the line, we would have to hire somebody to. You know, approve a major project but if it was out of Jay's jurisdiction. Again, I thought that eliminated Goody. That was how it was. Presented. It is going to eliminate, but it's not going to. It's going to be a tapered effect. It's not going to be a. There it is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Any other comments? Public comments. All right. Um, hearing no, I guess we'll move on to the building code hearing. This was to uh, correct um, a little inconsistency existed with our old building code, um, allowing a 200 square foot um, freestanding structure. Um, the state building code requires that it can only be 120 square feet, so we have to change the uh, wording on the, the present code by deleting, uh, cannot, does not exceed 200 square feet to does not exceed 10 by 12 per the state building code. So that's that in a nutshell. Um, this would be on item 7A of uh, the Town of Jackson building code. That this would be the, the item that would be edited so it matches the state building code. Jerry. That was listed as a, <coughs> as a planning board um, Offered amendment was it or was it from the fire marshal? Um, it was probably came through both of them. I don't know exactly who submitted it, but we knew that there was an issue there. We had to rectify that wording. I don't have a problem with the issue. I just wondered. Yeah, I don't know who. I don't remember exactly who brought it for. I know both parties have discussed it, so I think it was kind of a collaborative type thing. Any other comments on that? Do we take a motion to amend, the building. amend those? No, I close, the, close the public hearing first. I do. You want a motion to amend? Not yet. We have to close the public hearing. We got it. Oh. Got it. Well, now we so can I'll take change. a motion to close the public hearing. There so are no other first comments. Second. All those in favor. Right. Right. Square footage from 200 square feet to not exceed 10 by 12 per state building code. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Excuse me. Budget hearing number three. Hand out the paperwork. Hold on. All right. Hand out the paperwork. Before we go into the budget hearing, um, we had a pr presentation at the last meeting 
uh, by the trustees of the trust funds um, about how they wanted to uh, address their investment policies. He's here. And yeah, I know we have a representative here. Um, and I'm not sure if that was going to, we, it, it wasn't on the agenda, so I, I, I think that we, do, do, so before we um, commence the budget hearing, should we go back into a regular meeting session and, and address that? Yeah. Sure. I'll, I'll That's fine with me. I'm the thing is waiting, I guess, for another meeting. Right, we right. Do it, let's do it. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that we re enter our regular uh, public meeting session. So move we'll second. All those things. All right. Okay. You want to come up and. Um, I think we had such a thorough and comprehensive uh, presentation last time, but a, a brief refresher and where we were at with that. And, um, Again, under the current uh, way that Jackson works, it's something called under the prudent man rule. So how would a prudent man uh, invest their funds? The state passed a, a law, an amendment to how you could invest your money. It said that you could do what they call the prudent investor rule, which means uh, you can hire a, a outside investment firm to uh, help manage the funds. And that's what we're proposing, and that's what the warrant says, is to uh, allow that process to be in effect. Um, what does that mean as far as, I think, the concern is, what does that mean as far as risk? And you know, my answer is that there's, uh, one, there's risk in, in everything. And under what we're currently doing, the, the risk is that we're not getting any return whatsoever. So the attempt to increase that uh, gives you different kinds of risk. I mean, could could the funds uh, potentially lose money? Yes, they could. Um, but the way that we can design that is is to lose a very little bit of money. And in the, and so the flip side of that is that under that strategy, you're not going to make a ton of money either. But it just simply makes sense that uh, you know to uh, increase the funds uh, over time as opposed to letting them stay where they are because if we, they stay where they are under current interest rates, we're, we're actually losing money. There's the risk to where we are. We're actually losing purchasing power. So, uh, and again, I, I, we, the people that we're talking to, and I, I, gave, uh, I gave Bob a, a copy of it. I don't know if you folks have seen it. But, um, you know, we're, we're talking to people that have a lot of experience in, in managing municipal assets. And a couple of firms that come to mind, a Charter Trust out of Manchester, Cambridge Trust out of Manchester, they, I, I recall the Charter manages for 94 different communities. Um, I'm not sure that they're all the state of, Mass uh, state of uh, New Hampshire. Um, and uh, Cambridge Trust uh, does an equal amount if not more of this type of investment. So it's not something that is out of the ordinary. Uh, it's not something that these people don't have experience with, and it's not something that that we don't have experience with uh, on, the, on the board. That's... Are there regulations and rules as far as what you can and cannot invest in? I mean, is there some kind of... Well, process there? there's definitely a process. There's definitely a process. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to short the market uh, and do uh, exotic things like that. Um, I don't see that there'll be any uh, collateralized debt or, uh, or, or anything like that. It's, it, it's the sensible approach would be to invest in um, U.S. high dividend paying stocks. Um, not, not not the whole thing, the accommodation of stocks and bonds and, and CDs and other fixed income instruments. But again, it's not going to be uh, oil wells in, in Texas or anything like that at all. <coughs> very, very conservative uh, uh, type of uh, investment. Thanks for the recap. Okay. And I think that, as I recall, I mean, that, that my concern was, you know, is this something that other municipalities do and Chris 
uh, dropped off the portfolio. I looked at it, and the references were like, uh, City of Manchester, it was the Manchester Library or something, City of Cobblestown, it was large cities, and I just had no idea that this was something other municipalities typically do, and I thank Chris for you know, pointing that out, as well as Helen and the rest of the trustees of the trust fund, and it seems, um, it's certainly something I feel supportive of. I'm okay with it. I think it's uh, probably a good idea. Thank you, Vernon. Right. Thank you, Chris. <clears throat> we to do it. Um, so, is there um, any procedural things we have to do to get that ball rolling? Or the only thing you have to do is to uh, get the warrant to the town. And if the town approves it, then we can go forward. We've, we've actually been holding off seeing people until we're pretty sure that things are going to be okay. uh, copacetic. And we've got the wording all worked out on that, um, right, Julie? Yeah. Okay, great. They actually had it already set. Sweet. Very good. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris. <coughs> all right, moving on to budget hearing number three, I guess. Are we ready for that? Make a and motion. Make a motion to um, into, budget into, into budget hearing number three. And nothing has changed in the operating budget except for one thing, and that is that we need. A, we had a motion oh, first. Sorry. That's my motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Right. Uh, right. So only one thing has changed in the operating budget, and we didn't need to go through everything again because we already done it. But um, we increased the police budget by four thousand dollars because they had a radio that unexpectedly. Um, stopped working, so mm -hmm. that was increased by three and four thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. I could talk a lot of details about it, but I don't think it matters. It's just one of those things that came up. You do your best job trying to budget and then agree to fall apart. So. Yeah, well, at least we got it before it was finalized. I guess that's a right. that's good news on that. Any comments on that or concerns? I have none. Entertain a motion to uh, add that four thousand dollars for the radio to the budget. So moved. Mm -hmm. Second. Any discussion? None. None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anything else? Close to public hearing. Pardon? Close to public hearing. Yeah, there's nothing else on that. Okay. All right. Take a motion to close the budget hearing number three. <laughs> No, 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 you've got to go over the Warner. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was just the item on that. Okay, I thought it was just the budget mm -hmm. items that we were talking about. No, anything. I was, anything that's for right. the Warner. What are we going to do here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Warren articles. Let's go through them individually. Yeah. All right. Previous year items that are off our list are the town office roof and the police department air slash heating unit. Um, new this budget cycle, highway truck replacing the 2005 4x4. Um, those monies have already been Approved, correct? Or, or in the, the um, um, in the fund. Help me. They're already in the capital reserve. In, in the capital reserve. Capital reserve fund, thank you. That's what I was trying to think of the phrase. <laughs> uh, capital reserve fund, so uh, that was one item that we wanted to approve. I just need to know your, your whether you guys are in favor at this point for each yeah, one. Okay, so um, highway truck. Do you want to do it? Yes. All those in favor? All those in favor. Aye. Aye. So three zero. Uh, replacing the 2011 cruiser, police cruiser for 45. Again, that money is in the trust fund. Take a vote on that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Jackson Bartlett Ambulance. This is a to create a, um, or add to the trust fund or 
We're creating it. Creating it, right, because this is the first it. item, right? And this is going to be purchased uh, not this year, but next year. Um, and uh, obviously, Bartlett will have matching funds for that <coughs> $45,000, bringing in the total between the two towns to ninety. All those in favor of that like article? Aye. Uh, town office, air conditioner heater. Uh, our last one died on us, so that needs to be replaced. Um, all those in favor of that article? Aye. Aye. An old library, 16,000 repair and restore um, the existing building. Report that it was in dire need of some um, TLC. And I should say 3,500 of that is offset by the Old Library Trust. 3,500 is offset by that? Yeah. And I'd just like to say that they, they uh, the Old Library Management Committee has been very diligent at going out, <coughs> getting a number of different estimates, and uh, what at one point looked like would require a warrant with a higher amount now even the 16 maybe a high-end uh, estimate so obviously anything that's not used to be returned to the town but uh, i think everybody's feeling really uh, comfortable with the protection on the building that will result uh, from the renovation from the outside protection and we're all in favor of that all those in favor in the uh, old library? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Reoccurring items that have to fire, fire department truck capital reserve fund is being reduced by 20000 um, All those in favor in that article? Aye. 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 Road construction capital reserve fund. Um, up to 15,000, uh, a lot of that was finishing off, skim coating, sealing all the ones that were um, done this year, as well as I think they are going to reclaim um, Valley Crossroad, and that is up 15,000 to 65. All those in favor in that item? Aye. Aye. Chime in if anybody has any comments here, okay? No. <laughs> so I'm not in yeah. <laughs> uh, Highway Truck Capital Reserve Fund, uh, 50000 And all those in favor in that? Aye. Aye. Highway, uh, State Highway Block Grant, 37. Again, that's offset. Oh, you missed the transfer station. Oh, I missed the transfer station. Sorry. Transfer Station Expendable Trust Fund. Um, this should be 60, shouldn't it? Uh, well, it's it, we're going to put the 50 into the capital reserve fund that already oh. exists, and, and we are our plan calls for spending up to 60 this year. And we have 93 in there already. That's right. Okay. So, uh, any comments on that? Yes, Gino. Just curious, uh, while you're on that topic, mm -hmm. uh, when does the current contract with Batlet on the transfer station end? Do you know? I think it's a three-year contract that was just renewed. Oh, it was renewed? Yeah. Oh. Any other comments? All those in favor of the transfer station article? Aye. 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 State Highway Block Grant, 37472. Um, this is, a, again, reoccurring grant that we get. Um, any discussion on that? All those in favor in that? Aye. Aye with me. State Aid Reconstruction Expendable Fund, $30,000. Any comments on that? All those in favor in that article? Aye. Aye. Heavy Highway Vehicle Capital Reserve Fund, another 30000 in there. Any discussion on that item? All those in favor in that? Aye. Aye. Bridge repair, bridge repair expendable trust fund is up 20000 This is mostly, I believe, due to the Valley Crossroad Bridge. Um, any discussion on that? Yes. 
It's Penny. Penny. I'm sorry, I didn't see you back there with the hat. <laughs> is the Valley Crossroad Bridge, can you tell it, just tell us the status of it? Is it going to be replaced? Is the sidewalk going to be replaced? Uh, we are on a waiting list to have that done. Uh, there are a couple options. We could do it through our own monies or we can have the state do it and they'll reimburse us after it's all completed 80%. So we're kind of preparing both scenarios and seeing how which one is going to be the better deal. I think, is it 2018 that's up? Yeah, I think we come up 2018. So um, it's a little ways off for that to be fixed. How often does that bridge get inspected? Oh, it's inspected all the time. It passes inspection. It's just the crosswalk that's not. The bridge itself is very sound, but it's the crosswalk that is needing attention. So it has to be closed. Does the crosswalk, I mean, are we replacing the bridge because of the crosswalk? I mean, can we just not fix the crosswalk? No, it was a red listed bridge anyway. I'm sorry? The whole bridge. Was yeah, the whole bridge is, gonna, is the ultimate goal to get that done. But I mean, it's, it's a situation where, you know, it's it's almost, which one do you want to do? Do we want to do it ourselves or do we want to go through the 80%, you know, repayment from the state? Right now, the last time we looked at the money, it's almost identical um, in terms of, you know, you know, Rob and Peter to pay Paul to. So we could do a $200,000 repair on the bridge, or we could work with the state and wait for them to come in and do a complete rebuild of the bridge, which would be Replay. about a million dollars, and and spend the same 200000 So that's kind of where we're moving forward with this right now with some engineering firms to kind of get both of those proposals in front of us so we really understand what the differences would be and what's the best way forward for us. Structurally, there's nothing wrong with where the cars travel across the bridge. There's nothing structurally unsound about it. It's the, it's the trestles that where, where they come into contact with the road that gets regular salt that are constantly being welded and, and are constant rust, rust issues, but that does not impact the structural uh, integrity. integrity of the bridge. And I believe it also needs to be re um, surface as well I mean, yeah. if we don't go through a full repair or replacement. Any other else on that? All those in favor of the bridge repair expendable trust fund? Aye. Aye. Police cruiser, capital reserve fund, again another ongoing item. 15-5 um, we're putting in this year, same as last year. Any comments on the police cruiser? Of course, we would receive monies from the sale of the old one, too. So I'll go back and let the town coppers. Uh, any comments? Uh, no? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Reevaluation of town property capital reserve, uh, re -evaluation of town property capital reserve fund. Um, a new item this year, but we always have to be reevaluated, so we're going to throw a cycle. And the cycle is coming up, so we have to throw any grant to that. Any comments on that? Anybody? All those in favor <coughs> in the reevaluation of town property capital reserve fund? Aye. 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 Dry hydrant expendable trust fund, 5,000. Any comments on that? All those in favor of the dry hydrant expendable trust fund? Aye. 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 Police Department equipment expendable trust fund is 3,000. Those are mostly radio issues and and small ticket items that uh, would be outside the budget that have to be replaced, I guess. What else would be in there, Chief? Computer equipment, camera mm -hmm. equipment, mm -hmm. firearms, taser replacement, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Comments on that item? All those in favor of the Police Department Equipment Expendable Trust Fund. Aye. 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 <coughs> Jackson Chamber of Commerce, fireworks, 3,000. Same as last year. Any comments on that? Yes, Penny. Uh, can you explain why the taxpayers are paying for fireworks? Uh, I believe it was done. What was it? Who paid for it before? Was that now? Chamber of Commerce. Pardon me. I think the Chamber of Commerce did. Yep. Yeah. These are the fireworks and the beautification are requests from the chamber. How were they funded before? I thought they were. Private donations. 
Well, yeah, and, that, and then Mallet basically yes. funded them. And then they'll work on those properties. Does it continue to just do it just because it's habit? Um, it's, sure. That's not the full cost of the fireworks. Oh, no, yeah. no. there's, there's a lot of donations to pay for it as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the chamber has asked for a contribution from the town, and the town has always voted for it. And it does draw a lot of people to town, and obviously it's, it's pretty popular. And they're better than North Conway's. Yeah, they are. Well, what benefit is it to the town? Well, we have people spend money. You know, they come in and, and you know, hit the local establishments and, and uh, you know, get to visit our town and, and maybe have some future desire to stay here, you know. It's not always locals that come up to these things. There's also locals that enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? All those in favor of the Jackson Chamber of Commerce Fireworks. Aye. Aye. Yes. Jackson Chamber of Commerce Beautification Project. And again, this is ongoing money set to uh, improve a little, obviously not a lot of money, so just, you know, Nickel and dime stuff, bridge lights, um, Christmas you know, decks. Yep, the uh, Christmas wreaths and things. Yeah. Any comments on that? All those in favor of the Jack and Congress beautification project. All right. Uh, next uh, petition to articles. Um, I don't think there are many new ones here, but it looks like these are the same old, same old. But Conway uh, Humane Society is new. Oh, it's Conway Humane Society. Okay. First up is Children Unlimited. Uh, we're increasing that to 3,000 this year. So again, it was petitioned by Children Unlimited. Any comments on that? All those there in that petition article. All right. Uh, that represents an increased ask from them. Correct. Right. Yeah, they they asked us for 26 last year, and this year they're asking us for three. Correct. Conway Air. Excuse me. Conway Area Humane Society, uh, new one, $1,000. Uh, what's the gig on that one, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, let's see. <coughs> oh, you know what, I didn't bring it in, but it's basically to um, help care for animals that have been abandoned there or... Um, The purpose of continuing services for stray, abandoned, and neglected animals brought by a shelter, brought to the shelter by animal control or private citizens no longer able to care for them. Um, Chief, you have any involvement with that? We do. Mm -hmm. We just, uh, we just, Lauren, renewed our contract with them, <coughs> our law department. Uh, which takes care of quarantining those types of animals as well. So that's a, this is just an addition to that, I guess. It's part of their operational needs. <coughs> but I, I can look back at the record. I think uh, I think we had occasion to bring animals there uh, eight or ten times probably over the last 12 months. This is a different model for them, uh, I guess, why no ask in previous years and, and why an ask this year? It seems to be. I can't answer that with any confidence. <coughs> I can refer to Warren about that. Okay. It seems to be that. All right. And I think that we make, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, all of these petitioned articles, I think last year we had a conversation about how it was going to be important for the legislative body to have uh, Representative. representatives from each of those organizations here to address concerns that may come up on the floor. So I hope that they'll be able to provide somebody, especially as it's a new, a new petitioned article this year. Absolutely. B. I have a question. Absolutely. Go ahead. They import from down south and all over the country these shelters. They're not just for a while. I'm not familiar with how they well, operate. Well, my personally. son has one. He came from <coughs> Texas, so I didn't know they imported. Mm -hmm. Let's not be happy. Penny. So, with, with these petitioned articles, is there? I guess I just don't understand the process. Um, 
you say no, can you say no to them? Absolutely. Yeah. This is going to be done at the town meeting. Bro. But tonight, but the petition on if they have if they have enough signatures, it has to go on the on on the warrant. Okay. So expressing an opinion here about a petitioned article has no effect whatsoever. Is that not if it's been petitioned? Not if it's been, okay, then I'll just... But it's voted at town meeting. But we do vote to accept or reject at the town meeting itself, so do we can... Do you vote as selectmen to support it? Right. Okay, so an opinion now could have an effect. Good. Could. Yep. Okay. I guess my, my, as you both all know that I'm probably the biggest animal lover here, um, but I look at people's needs as a priority. Conway Humane Society is a very well-run organization that gets a tremendous number of donations, and they do have a huge force of importing animals from down south. And I guess I would recommend that if we're going to put $1,000 towards animals, I would recommend that it goes more towards people in need in these other organizations. Gina? Uh, quick, uh, I've got two dogs uh, that have been imported, and one that I've gotten out from the West Drive Fund. So i got three dogs that are imported. And uh, one of the problems that's happening around here, if you look at the newspapers for rental apartments, many, many, many of them say no pets. Yeah. So for a person has to see, married has a pet, finds a pet, has a pet, and they have to move, they've lost a job, they have to downsize. So it is a people thing. Because these people, a lot of them are giving up their pets, which is swamping this office for the canines and the cats. And I, you know, so it's a very good cause. Uh, and it is somewhat for the people, too, because they no longer have their pets and they have to give them up. So rather than being euthanized, they can probably then be led to another party. Good point. Chris? Um, I think the, the distinction between these dogs that are being uh, imported, so to speak. Um, I have a dog from uh, from Alabama. Um, it, it, <laughs> a little uh, Walker Coon Hound dog, uh, very friendly. But that's not the Humane Society that is doing that. Right. These are volunteers, and, and one of my daughter's friends mm -hmm. is uh, brings these puppies up from any, all over the South. They they just don't spay their dogs down there. Now that's not to say mm -hmm. that some of these brought up and again you make a perfect example that an owner of one of these dogs can't get a uh, uh, an apartment with, with a dog so he, they might end up in the humane society but it is not the humane society that is bringing these dogs in at all thank you for clarifying all right anybody else but again the town won't chance it doesn't plot <coughs> to those ones. right right again that's, that's the idea so it will be voted on <coughs> All those in favor of the Conway Area Humane Society article? Aye. 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 Tri-County Community Action is went down 3,000? Well, they've always requested 3,000. Oh. It's always gone up at town meeting. Oh, it's, that's, uh, it was requested to pump it up. Yeah. It's been about two or three years in a row, right? Right. Excuse me. Uh, any discussion on the Tri-County cap there? All those in favor? All right. All right. Gibson Center, um, same as last year, 2,500. Any comments on that? All those in favor? All right. White Mountain Community Health is a new one, looks like. Well, it was on two years ago, and then they weren't on last year, and now they're not on. Oh, that's right. They missed the deadline. That's right. No, they actually didn't need any money. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And the amount uh, signifies our contribution to what? They have a calculation. I'd have to go back and look. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Any comments on that one? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Starting point, 834. Any comments on that one? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Northern Humanity Services, Northern Human Services, excuse me, 716. Any comments on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Eastern Slope Regional Airport, $500. Any comments on that? Penny. Just because 
why again is there any benefit to this town this well, comes up every year and it's still i mean do yeah. we say no to anything <laughs> Again, it'll be brought to the vote, I and mean, we do have a pretty lively discussion at that particular item. I know that from years past. It's, um, it's kind of the know. same question that gets asked and answered every year. I, I, we don't have a different answer than the answer that was given Please. last year. We we do have that airport then available to utilize for emergency evacuation it's purposes used. for people that need medical care and things it's like not that. Used, it's already been determined it's not used for medical evacuations. Chair? To quote Angus, Dr. Angus Badger at last year's meeting, they didn't use it for a medical evaluation evacuation last year, but if they do use it only once, paid for. It's paid for. George, a couple of things. When the uh, the uh, group of towns that originated the whole commitment to Freiburg to the uh, airport, while it is not listed as an obligation. It assumes that it would be, having served on that board for a few years, it's necessary for, to maintain that organization. Secondly, <coughs> it provides an excellent place to stage fighting forest fires. And when you look at the, the uh, areas to, to the east of us, in, the, in those areas that don't permit any logging and don't permit this thing, it is probably provides a best staging area to keep us out of the fire. Any other comments? All those in favor of the Eastern Slope Regional Airport? Aye. Aye. Non monetary articles. First one up was the building code amendment that we just had the meeting on. Any more comments on that one? All those in favor of the building code amendment. Aye. Aye. Zoning ordinance. Uh, we got a couple here. Um, first one is setbacks from 50 feet from the center of the line in residential. You can read. You can read. Yeah. Your other sheet is right now. There it is. Let me get it. Excuse me. Yeah. You want to find the last one? It's going to be Article 2, 3, and 4. 2, 3, and 4? Yep. 2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no building structure, porch, or portion thereof shall be located on a lot near or any lot line near round stream or body of water with the minimum setback set forth below. From the center line as the traveled way of any public or private road is 50 feet. And that would be changed from a hundred. No, it was changed. It was changed from fifty feet of the front. Oh, from the yes. yeah, from the um, right way to the center line. Right. That's what we're doing. What they're doing, I should say. So it's going from the center line of the road, the, the travel way, as opposed to the right of way, which is on the edge or side of the road. That's the change there. Any comments on that? All those in favor of that zoning ordinance? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Next one is for the village that's district. That's actually zoning on this show. I'm sorry? That's not building on this, but it's zoning on this. I said zoning. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, the next one was uh, the exact, exact same thing, so that's for the village district. So it's 50 feet from the center of the line instead of from the right away. Any discussion on that? All those in favor in that zone so ordinance? Aye. 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 And the last one is non-conforming structure. And this is non-conforming structure or building may be moved, enlarged, altered, restored, or replaced within the boundaries of its lot occupied at the time of this ordinance took effect providing that the changes do not make the structure any more non-conforming in any way. Any discussion on that one? Uh, no, no.
no changes in the proposal and the, for the first center. Remainder is to be omitted, I guess is what happened on that one. So I made some editing errors by corrections here, I believe. Any <coughs> comments on that? <coughs> yes, Gene. Oh, the quick one. Uh, the original, the original non-conforming lot, I believe, uh, could not be increased in height. Right. This one would allow a height to reflect the same height as the rest of the town, 35 feet. So you could, all the way around a non-conforming lot, with a rest a, a non-conforming structure under the old rule. I assume is what they mean. You can now change that to a 35 foot height instead of the fact you prior to it, you couldn't raise the height on a non-conforming structure. So in essence, what could happen, like on Green Hill Road, um, <coughs> Brian South, Brian and that cat, that little structure was a big to do when they were fixing it. They could only go up a couple of, with a few inches in the, in the height to give them a little headroom in one particular room. It could not go up to the 35 feet. Under this, it would practically have a whole second floor. So that's a very important consideration. You've got a bunch of um, ski lodges and stuff. They may only, they may be non-conforming, but the height has never been allowed to be increased. So if you look all around town at all the structures that are small ski lodges on non-conforming lots, those non-conforming structures can be as high as any of the house in Jackson. It's, it's a very important amendment. Um, I don't know if anybody's going to talk about it at the meeting, but it's, it's a very important amendment. Yeah? The volume restriction forbids or, or made it impossible for someone to add a dormer to their, to their house or, in the case of the Dickey property across the street, raise the, the roof line to um, meet current building codes. Um, <coughs> the volume restriction does not allow the property to exceed in any setback um, increase, and it also doesn't allow it to go to any height above what any other house in Jackson could be, yeah. which is 35 feet. It, 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 it just allows someone who happens to be on a non-conforming lot to increase their their home or improve their home to make it more livable. And the idea behind it was that Jackson has strived for many years to provide um, ordinances, um, such as a, the accessory building ordinance, to allow for um, improvements to homes to make them more affordable or to, to seem more affordable. And many homes in Jackson a valuation under 250,000, but they can't be improved because of the volume restriction. This makes it possible for someone to put a dormer on or a shed, increase the roof, um, but not above the 35 feet, which everybody else in town is subject to. Right. Gino? Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not pro con on what I'm saying is I just wanted the board to understand what they're signing on to. Because that is a big, big difference. That because if you've got a small house, and there are a lot of them in town, on a non-conforming lot, now you can go to 35 feet. And it was only 12 feet high at one point in time. That's a big addition. Maybe not just the door, but just to let you know, I, I don't know what's gonna happen when they vote on it, but it is a big issue, I think. We have a ton of homes in this town that are on non-conforming lots. That's all. 200 or something. Any other questions or comments on that? All those in favor in the ordinance? Aye. 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 <coughs> Trustee of the Trust Funds, uh, do you uh, use investment revenue to pay for the investment broker? This is what Chris was alluding to before. Uh, let's see, where is that? Thirty-five. Thirty-five. 
34. See if the town will vote through pursuant of NHRSA 35 9A 2 to authorize the trustees of trust funds to pay expenses incurred for professional banking or brokerage assistance in managing of the capital reserve and expendable trust funds in their custody directed from such capital reserve and expendable trust funds. No vote by the town will rescind such authority shall occur within five years of the adoption of this article. <laughs> yes, Stan. It says to you, use investment revenue to pay for investment broker. Is that accurate? If, if there was no investment revenue, would you still hire the broker? Yes. So that's not accurate. Well, yeah, it probably should just, say. I mean, that's, that's, that's just my little side note. Those right. are not going but on. just so it yeah. doesn't appear at the town meeting. No, it's so, not. Oh, we'll pay that, but it could go into the corpus of it. Yes, the funds. It's not just revenue being used. Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, adoption of ordinance regulation of public consumption of alcohol. Town meeting. Vote. See if the town will vote to adopt proposed town ordinance regulating the public consumption of alcohol. This is 35. Copies of the proposed ordinance are available. Selections are often available at the town meeting. Discussion on that? Karen. I understand it might be at the selector's office, but there's no little description. Can you give us a little feedback? You probably have already read it. Can you give us an idea of what it's about? Because it, it, usually we've got descriptions, but not on us. Okay, well, it defines what alcoholic beverage, liquor, and public way are. And then item number two, it says, no person shall consume any alcoholic beverage or liquor or carry an open container containing alcoholic beverage or liquor in or on the area known as Jackson Falls or in or on any other public street, public highway, public sidewalk, public way, public square, or public common within the town of Jackson Hanley. Then there's a penalty. Phase, uh, any person who violates the provisions of the town warrant shall be fined not less than $50 and not more than $200 for each offense. This town warrant shall be placed at any previous town of Jackson public consumption of alcohol ordinance enacted by the town of Jackson Board of Selectmen. And that has an effective date. Penny. Is there a problem? <laughs> Question? <laughs> Well, please department be monitoring it. Well, is there a problem with this now? I don't know. I don't believe there is presently a problem, no. So why are we creating a law if there's no problem? This was proposed by the chief, and, and they thought this would be something that would be apropos in case there was any issue that we had something to stand on. If there was an issue outside of Wildcat Tavern or another establishment, you know, we have uh, some grounds of which to um, enforce law, if I'm not mistaken. Does that sound accurate to you? Yeah, that's correct. Was, uh, probably the, the biggest catalyst to me thinking about this was the, the chamber ran an ad inviting people to town and having a picnic and a few glasses of wine at the fall. I just think that's a dangerous thing to start advertising having glass products in the Rocky area and swimming areas. I also get concerned about when I see uh, wine bottles and beer bottles at the Covered Bridge Dance. Is that, is that the place that we want to have that with kids running around? And the same with the duck racing. Mm -hmm. I also am not aware of any town close to us that doesn't have some kind of an open container law on public property. It's, it's not a state law? It's not yeah. a state law. So, if right now, a person of legal age and ability can walk down Main Street with an open bottle of wine or a bottle of beer, drop it on the ground and be off. off well, they can't drop it on the lawn. The caveat being we could pick it up for litter, litter. But in terms of having the alcohol there. Well, it, um, is there, I'm just wondering if there's another way to address this. You mentioned glass at the falls, um, approaching the chamber directly if they're the one doing the advertising. And is, does that mean there's going to be more signage at the falls and around town saying, you know, no glass, no alcohol? Other, you know, is there, are there going to be more signs? Okay. 
we started looking at this back in July or August when it was brought to our attention that there were people in travel magazines encouraging people to go to the falls with a bottle of wine and that's basically uh, how long ago the dialogue began and it was brought to our attention that as the chief had mentioned that most every other town up here has an ordinance for uh, alcohol use. If we don't have an ordinance, we have no way to regulate uh, public drinking on Jackson uh, land. I thought Jackson already had an ordinance. I'm not arguing against this, but I thought we had one on Jackson property, public property, no alcohol allowed. No? Most towns do, but we, we did not. We, we crafted our, we took a look at uh, was it uh, Holderness, Laconia, and Madison ordinances, I think, is, is what we used as templates to kind of craft ours, but we did not have one. You might be thinking of allowing people, like, if they want to use, they requested to use the gazebo or the field, the insurance will cover it. Our insurance will cover it. Well, like when we had the, used to have the fireman's barbecue oh, sure. and the park and all that, no alcohol allowed. There was, there was an ordinance. I don't know what happened to it, but... There was one in place. We don't have one on the books. So there's not going to be signs posted that the fall is saying no alcohol. There will. Probably should be some kind of sign posted, and <laughs> but I, I, there's nothing planned at this point. But. I guess. Well, how would people know if you put this in? Oh, you're going to have to sign. If there's no yeah, signage is typically not um, part of a warrant article. I'm sure we'll have conversations if the legislative body wants to approve this ordinance on on on, on how we'll get the word out and publicize it. I think that there certainly are <laughs> ways that I believe we would feel obligated to be responsible to do that, work with the uh, police department to make sure that message is out there. I have no problem with that. Jerry? Um, by way of example, recently someone had set the um, Appalachian Trail crossing record in time, and they held a celebration on the top of Katahdin, which included champagne. And um, the, rest. the Forest Service was quite upset by it because they thought they had an ordinance preventing such things. They found out they really didn't, so they've now changed it so that people can have champagne celebrations in public parks. And I don't see any downside to this, um, but um, I forgot to mention on, I'm sorry about this, but on the um, amendments to the zoning, um, both the fire marshal and the building inspector were given copies of it and it was explained fully to them. Both of them gave their support to those amendments. Karen? My question is not on public property. Right. But we you also mentioned Tom Palm, the commons, the, and I assume that's in the village here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that not restricting the businesses that have property right in the pond, the Wildcat Tap and the Snow Lake, or the golf course, because the golf course is a place where people do drink alcohol, cross the road, and continue golf. And there is alcohol in the vehicle as they pass. How are you going to handle that? Uh, I did ask the chief about that, and that would be okay, right? Because they're just going across from one piece of property to the other. It's so okay. it's covered by the air license. And, and the examples that you've given are all private property. Yeah. Okay, so like if Snowflake had people sitting up having a picnic Not on their lawn, it's their lawn, they can do it. Yeah, that's right. Their lawn goes through the soccer field so they can sit on the soccer fields to still have a glass of wine. If it's their property, they can do it. Okay. Well, if they cross the street, you're saying somehow their liquor license covers that? If they sure. cross Main Street, which is clearly not their property. Right. We're why talking about the. Why does their license cover that? It doesn't say. I have, have, I have to look into their license, but an off-premise license typically is going to cover the transportation of that product from one place to the other, as long as it's from one private entity to a, to the same private entity. So the egress of it is covered under that license. So if the, the ski club crosses to the. No. The other place that shouldn't be covered. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Penny. <laughs> yeah, so are picnics going to be allowed with pickles in glass containers at the falls? No. <laughs> That's all right. Not, not the right? But it's I'm, glass. I'm not prohibited. Yeah, yeah, this, this ordinance isn't way. addressing glass. We're using that as an example to say that this is one of the reasons why. You can just as easily say a can of beer or an alcohol, you know, a plastic cup. A plastic cup or even an intoxicated person. These are all hazards we're trying to prevent. I guess I still feel that there hasn't been a problem. So. Again, this can be voted on in the town meeting. Okay. It, it, it just seems to me there's a, a ton of gray area here. Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I could be um, up on uh, uh, Prospect Farm on a cross country trail. And then as soon as I step into National Forest, I can have a beer. Um, but I can't if I'm on the trail. <laughs> and I, I think the, if I'd be interested in the ordinance that said, you know, no glass at the falls. But if, if you don't have a problem, um, you know, why create one? I mean, you know, somebody sitting by the falls with a can of beer at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, I, I mean, I just don't. Uh, I, I've never seen anybody there intoxicated, never. And you know, my, you know, I, I think you're making too, too, too much of a gray area here that would be very difficult and very unfair to enforce. Gino. Uh, it, it is. Keep in mind, we've already said we don't have a problem. That's been said by never. If, if the chief of police says we don't now have a problem, why well, assume there's going to be a problem? Uh, and one other thing, when Bob Stevenson was the head of the uh, Called, chamber of commerce. We had a bet one time. He went out, this is 10 years ago, counting the signs on the loop, up and around the farm, <coughs> and back down to the loop. I think the number was like 134. What we don't need here, and this is nothing to do with the law, is any more signs that say bridge three feet, speed limit two and a half miles an hour, Five feet to bridge, 100 feet before the school, 28 or 30, no parking signs. When you can put one down and cover 50 feet or 100 feet, we don't need any more signs. They might as well change the name to sign them. It's ugly driving up the bridge. You see, there's at least six or seven signs within 100 feet of the bridge. No passing, one lane, 15 feet, blah, blah, blah. I think we're really going, I think we should have an ordinance that says get rid of the signs, leave it up to people's individual habits, and then control the riots if, if any results. Jack? We don't have a sign in Jackson that says you cannot drive a vehicle with an open alcoholic container. It's a state, state, that's a state law. I don't know, but I don't know anywhere in the state where it says that. No. On a sign. People know and respect the law, or should. I don't see any downside to telling people you can't drink beer or alcohol at the falls or on public property. For example, you can't drink alcohol in the Whitney Center. I've heard people complain about, well, gee, if we had a wedding at the Whitney Center, why shouldn't we allow, be allowed to drink alcohol? It's school property. You're not supposed to drink alcohol at school property. What's the downside of saying you shouldn't be having a beer party or a wine party or a sangria party of any type at the falls? I mean, what's the downside of that? But it's not just the falls, it's all the Right, and one of the issues... Uh, just one, uh, Comment. One of the things we have is insurance. I mean, with, with having weddings, like Juliet said, if you know we have a party out there, um, our insurance will not cover it. So I may be overstepping my thought here, but um, you know, if you if you have an ordinance there, then that's going to reinforce the liquor issue with our insurance. That's was one of the concerns that was brought here. You know, that was one. If this is put in, it says public way or so it be any road in town. Absolutely. So if someone's having a party at their house, they're near the road, they're going to get arrested? They have to be on the road, but yes, technically they well, could. they're not going to get arrested. Well. It's a fine. It's a fine. It's like a ticket. Today. Yeah. All right, let's finish this up here, Karen. <laughs> and ultimately, the only reason really this was here is because in a business, 
decided to create some advertising that didn't look so great and invited people to do things that was not the best choices. Right. So maybe in that regard, we're protecting the town because of someone went out publicly across the internet inviting this. Any last comments? All right. All those in favor in the uh, liquor ordinance? Aye. Aye. And I would be opposed. Okay. Uh, that's it. All right. That's why I can't hear you, George. Right. Two, one. Was the vote. Across the board. Right. Um, take a motion to close the budget warrant article meeting. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And take a motion to go into non public pursuant of RSA 91A32C, matters which discuss the public adverse re effective reputation of others. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.